Hey, what's up guys? The boy Belden here, uh, back with another video. Um, over the past few days, uh, I've released quite a few uh, little tidbits of content and behind the scenes, I have been trying to track and quantify what impact a video or a guide can have on certain markets, uh, as well as you know whether or not that is reactionary, how sustainable it is, um, just to confirm some assertions that I've had that I think everyone's sort of known for a while. And, you know, to kind of address this mantra that people have that, you know, once something is put out there, it's gone forever. Um, so we're going to cover that today. Um, and, you know, pretty much TLDR, uh, why people are fucking up when they're watching guides uh, or the reading guides and you know, how you can improve that. Um, and so we're going to go into a case study here, specifically of what I've been doing for this one was with the tornado shot gems uh, I've been covering over the past few videos. Um, and uh, I think it highlights really the point that I'm making here, but again, this does apply to a lot of different content. So, uh, think about this in more of an abstract sense and not necessarily specifically for this. Um, and I'll get into that now. So, um, <clears throat> I actually made a PowerPoint for this, so we're getting pretty high tech, but we'll just jump right into it. Um, so title of this is again, the cycles of profitability, uh, that are created by guides and reactionary viewers. And as I said, AKA where many of you fuck up. And watching these types of videos and how you can fix that. So the first one I made, or the first uh, you know suggestion I made about this, uh, was using the uh, lenses on a divergent tornado shot to make anomalous and making profit there. Uh, what happened as a result was the divergent prices went up from 60 to 70 chaos at the time of recording to 110 to 130 chaos. Uh, the divergent price surpassed a point of net profit. Um, and then as a result, people lost interest in doing that. And the surge prices that were caused by a bunch of people running to do it at once, uh, they stabilized somewhat. Uh, a couple of days later, I released another guide. Uh, and this was actually the one that was last night. Uh, it was just a short little 15 minute guide. So make sure you check those both out. If you don't know what I'm talking about here. Um, and in this guide, I suggested that people use uh, a lens on a superior gem. So just a normal tornado shot, because basically uh, the divergent gem, uh, which was the worst outcome of the two, was the same price as the lens. Therefore, there was no way for you to lose money. Uh, but what happened as a result of this video, this was only within 24 hours, uh, the price of anomalous gems dropped from three divines to two divines. Uh, that stabilized somewhat. The price of divergent gems absolutely tanked. They were about 120 chaos at the time of recording, and they went now to 45 to 50 chaos. Uh, and the price of lenses went up uh, slightly from... But 110 to 120 C to the pretty stable around 140 C now. Um, so 24 hours after the video, so you know, not in that first surge where you get that big bump of viewership, uh, the price of anomalous recovered closer to the original price, uh, but the price of divergent uh, turnout shot remained in the gutter, and uh, the price of the lens remains pretty stab stable at its new price point. So here we're going to talk about the cycle. <laughs> so at this point, uh, you could return to the strategy discussed in the first video because the price of divergent gems is so cheap. It's actually lower in fact than it was at the time of the recording in the first video. But people are going to be less prone to using these lenses uh, because of the higher price and the lower hedge risk protection from brick cases. So that's with respect to the second video. Over time, divergent gem supply is going to begin to dwindle as it'll primarily move away from force creation. So right now there's a huge supply of these divergent gems because of how many people are attempting to do them on um, just the superior gem to try and create anomalous. This is very obvious because you can see there's a lot of level one with one quality gems, um, as opposed to the ones that are gonna drop naturally, uh, which would be through either um, heist or through uh, divination card. Those ones are gonna be like level 16, usually it's like, you know, 12 to 18 quality. Um, but yes, as less, since less people are gonna be using the lenses, uh, its price should drop. Uh, and as the uh, divergent price begins to rise, because people are going to A, start doing the first strategy again, or B, uh, because they're going to get bought up, and since less people are creating them through the mean, the forced means of using the lens, uh, <clears throat> the uh, strategy from the first video is going to become less and less viable. Eventually, <laughs> strategy two will become viable again. Uh, if there's ever a point where both of these strategies cease to be exist, or it's a to exist or be vital on paper, uh, it's likely that the price of the anomalous gem is being sold for less than what it's, you know, uh, cost to create on a cost counting basis. So in, in that situation, you can just simply go out and buy it. Um, eventually the market will correct and it'll, it'll stabilize somewhat. 
but there's only a finite amount of these that can you know emerge and especially with something like tornado, tornado shot which is one of the top used skills in the league anomalous being a tier one gem um and you know there's only so many people who do heists so eventually there is you know going to be some equilibrium reached uh but you know consider all the uh, first or previous uh, elements uh people are going to avoid large batches of this stuff as well because because of the dynamic nature and because these markets have been changing so much uh risk aversion is a real thing or at least the perception of it with a lot of people so they don't there's a lot of people who aren't going to want to get stuck with like a, a divergent gem because the, they're worried its price might tank um the result of this will be that it'll be easier to bulk buy things and you'll be able to take advantage of batch crafting uh, or rng elements to further augment these gems such as volling them or you know taking them to the temple uh the above the above points that i just mentioned will uh they continue to maintain a symbiotic relationship uh which will be ever changing but it will remain cyclical because again purely by function of how they work one will become better than the other at certain points so what is it that you guys are ignoring when you're watching this sort of stuff um that is the very important factor number one uh gem level uh, the quality of the gem uh what the next steps can be at a certain stage uh, as well as further augmentation right so a lot of people are just watching these taking that face value doing no other independent research or critical analysis of it and just kind of taking it there um the another thing people are ignoring is the natural divergence of life um they're currently price matching the people that are creating them forcibly um which means a lot of people are pricing like level 16 or 17 uh, divergent gems that they're getting from heist with 18 quality at the exact same price as a level one one quality brick uh, on the buy side if you're buying them take advantage of this and on the sell side you know make sure you're paying attention because it's obviously worth more um the focus has shifted obviously uh to the second video forgetting about the one that i talked about in the first video um and it, again people are ignoring the conditions that have emerged for that cycle to repeat again right uh people again people's memories in this game are very fickle and short and obviously i i recognize that not everyone who is doing this is going to be somebody that watched the content that i have um but it is pretty you know ob observable and measurable when there is a surge in these types of things uh, in fact I, I actually took screenshots every half hour last night um and within the first hour and a half of the video releasing uh both the divergent and the anomalous markets had tripled the amount of supply that they had previously um as, as well the lens markets the, the the market for lens was decreased by about 50 percent uh elements that are not explicitly mentioned in the video as uh or the videos uh people are often ignoring too uh so again like gem level quality and things like corruptions uh if you weren't watching a guide you would obviously factor these things in i don't know a single person who unless they were just following a step by step and so you know they had that that sense of confidence in thinking that they're following trusted information um that would see like a level 2020 gem that's clean and a level one gem and, and be like oh yeah those have equal value but for some reason uh people kind of tend to put on the blinders and ignore basic elements of of the game and, and market value so what's the point i'm really trying to make here um the focus uh as often is uh as, as is often the case in poe uh from what I've observed is that people are, are focusing on the explicit action rather than the technique. And I feel like I stress this every video, but it's not necessarily that important to look at exactly what I'm doing and copy it verbatim, but to understand why I, I got to that place or how I got to that place. And then, you know, use that data or that approach to inform your decision. If you're going to do that exact same action, again, consideration for the market conditions at the time, or better yet, apply that same philosophy to a different market so look at a different type of gem right there's literally hundreds of gem types you don't have to just do it on a tornado shot this is just you know for the purpose of this video it's very easy to uh compare here um and again uh you know people aren't looking at the next stages um when i was going putting all this data together for this video here um there's literally still about a half dozen ways that you can make money with specifically tornado shot gems um and it, it's funny because, you know, pretty much everyone I, I've spoken to or more recent comments are like, oh, fuck, I missed this market stank. Uh, the problem, yeah, again, is that people aren't uh, in, in, aren't listening to the important elements of what is being said, right? Um, so how I calculated or came to the conclusion that there was an inefficiency in the market originally, that is by far, in a way, the most important element to it, right? 
you know, if you can see, okay, he looked on POV DB, saw the ratios, went look at the price of the things, saw the price of the lenses, did the math, boom, bam. Now you have a recipe for success that you can apply to anything. Um, another thing too that's important, uh, I think that deserves mentioning is that like, there's a lot of defeatist attitudes uh, in POE. Um, you know, people that'll be like, oh, the market's tanked, see you next league. Uh, this was useful for about two hours or, um, you know, people will comment, I tried this exactly like you showed and I lost money. And then I put as a footnote here, uh, trying something without consideration or adherence to the specific conditions uh, that were presented to you is not at all the exact same thing as, you know, the original. Uh, and, you know, an analogy I thought of was like, imagine you watched a cooking show about like a, how to make the best steak in the world. And then the next day you went to your grocery store and took a raw steak out and started, you know, chomping on that meat. And you were like, yeah, no, I don't agree. Steak doesn't taste good. <laughs> you're ignoring all the steps of preparation or uh, everything there. You're just taking one, one element you want to focus on. And, and, you know, again, horse blinding your, your conclusions based on that. Again, please be, be considerate of all, con you know, all elements and factors. Um, again, if you were stopping this to the important part of why I did something, uh, you'd be able to follow that same logical approach and make a decision holistically with consideration for all everything, including the market uh, conditions and simple data driven uh, decision making. Um, this will cause you to become ever more self reliant, and that's the real way to become successful in POE long term, right? Is, is to be able to discover these things yourself and to know how to go out there and just find a market inefficiency and take advantage of it. Um, so, anyways, uh, just to follow up on, on what I'm saying here. Um, even the fact that I released a video 24 hours ago, and again, these markets are still double to triple what they were previously. As I mentioned, there's about a half dozen ways to make money. So just to highlight what I'm saying on a more, you know, uh, abstract sense, I'll give you specifics. So here's the data that's going to inform the decision-making process. Uh, the current market prices uh, for things that I covered in the previous videos, uh, a divergent tornado shot is 50 chaos. Anomalous ones are 2.2 to 2.4 divines. Um, the uh, lenses are 0.7 divines if you buy them in divines, uh, which is about 175 chaos, um, or you can buy them by chaos for 140 C. Um, now, these are market prices for things that are related to this that I didn't explicitly state in the other videos, but there should be obvious considerations. Um, a 2120 anomalous gem is 10, is 10 divines. A 2023 anomalous gem is 4.5 divines. A 2020 anomalous tornado shot is 2.8 to 3 divines corrupted, and it's 3 divines clean. Um, and again, if you see above, some of them are as cheap as 2.2 divines, which means literally by leveling one, you can make 0.8 divines. Um, a 2020 clean uh, divergent tornado shot is 150 chaos. Again, you can see there, they were as cheap as 50C, so by leveling it, 100 chaos profit. A 2120 divergent tornado shot is five divines, and a 2023 divergent tornado shot is 125 uh, chaos. And so here is a specific way to implement that data. If you were to buy tornado shot at 50 chaos to buy lenses at 140C as they are right now, uh, and we know that again that uh, the, to use a lens on a divergent tornado shot is a 20 to 70 weighting um, to turn into anomalous. So one in 3.5 will go anomalous. When I, when I, myself, when I approach data like this, if I see something like 20 to 70, which is obviously two out of seven, um, because, you know, if you're just to take seven gems and expect to get two of them, it's not unrealistic, but there's obviously variance in smaller sample sizes. So I'll usually take something like a data point, like a two and seven, and then I'll double it or I'll triple it just to have a more, uh, you know, predictable uh, shift towards like the mean value, right? Um, so in this case, you know, since it's two and seven, we could uh, take two or three times the amount for the thing here. I wrote three times because uh, 21 gems total is a pretty good number, pretty good sample size. Um, and it's just a nice round number two because, you know, lenses stack in 20. Um, so if we were to buy 21 gems, what would that cost us? Uh, so we're going to be paying 21 times 50 C, that's 1,050 chaos. And then 21 times 140 chaos for the lenses for 2,940 C for a total cost of 3,990 chaos or 15.96 divines. Now, if you were to just, again, use the lenses on them, uh, your average return with a one out of, uh, sorry, a five out of six, um, or sorry, a 20 out of 70 weighting going towards uh, divergent, uh, you would have, um, 
no, sorry, a 20 minute 70 weighting going from divergent to anomalous and the other one's going to superior. Your end result would be um, six uh, anomalous gems and uh, it should be 15 superior, sorry, I wrote 14, but 15 superior gems. Uh, six anomalous gems at, with current market prices would cost 18 divines. Uh, again, this is assuming that they were 2020, they would be worth somewhere between 15 or 16 divines if they were like level one with one quality. Um, 14 or 15, sorry, again, should say 15, 15 times superior gems. For the sake of just highlighting my point, I'm going to assume these have zero value. So we're going to give absolutely zero value to the ones that go superior. Um, however, as a point of note, a 2020 superior gem uh, is worth 20, 45 chaos. So on the high end, this could be worth, you know, somewhere between 630 to 700 chaos gun range, two to three divines, let's say. Um, the above already is a net profit, as we can see. Um, 18 divines minus 15.96 is, you know, over a two divine profit. Um, <clears throat> however, again, we don't want to just stop there. We want to take a holistic consideration for all of the available data. So what we're going to now look at again was the corruption gems. So we further observed that if you corrupt a gem and it has no impact, so it just stays 2020, there is a zero lot change in value. So it's three divines or it's three divines, you know, so there's zero risk there. Um, a 2120 gem, however, is 10 divines, which is more than three times the sale price. A 2023 gem is 4.5 divines, which is 1.5 times the original price. And minus quality is the only one that has a uh, negative out or a negative change to value. Uh, and that only lowers the value of that gem by 0 0.8 divines. Um, so you have, you know, you have two situations where it gains in value. Um, in one case, it's seven divines for that outcome of, of gain. Uh, the other one is 1.5 divines. And then you all, the, the other outcome you can have is zero, uh, zero change, zero change, uh, and then a minus 0 0.8 change, uh, minus 0 0.8 divines that is. So very obviously, this is something that you can do with a, a very, very high degree of net profit, the more you do it, uh, almost no risk. By the way, when I say zero, um, if something goes minus level, it's a, like a little bit annoying, but you can just re-level it, right? So there's no change there. It's the, pretty much the exact same thing, um, aside from the frustration perhaps of having to spend 30 minutes re-leveling the gym. Um, but as a result for our considerations uh, in the scenario laid out above, um, now again, we had six gems total. So uh, for the sake of not wanting to skew the data, I just assumed we had one of each outcome and then the other ones I put as no effect. Uh, this is not obviously how it works. And if you were to temple double corrupt this, it could even be a much better result. So again, this is a very low expectation. Um, and in no way is this beefing the data at all to support my thesis here. So if we had the, the six gems, we would hit, you know, a 2120 one. So plus one level one time, uh, plus quality one time, minus quality one time, minus level one time, no effect, no effect. So in that situation, we would have a 10 divine plus one, 4.5 divine uh, plus quality, a uh, 2.8 divine. I didn't actually even measure three divine. You could put those at three divines, uh, which would add 0 0.6 divines to it. So that, but, and then I also put 1.5 divines for the one that went minus quality. Again, reducing the value by 50%. Um, and in reality, it actually, as I mentioned on the data that we were presented, the market had it actually priced at only minus 0 0.8 divines. Whereas here I took away 0.2 divines for the ones that had no effect, and I took away 1.5 divines for the one that went minus quality. So again, I am overstating the point here. Um, and again, our total now is 22.15 divines, right? As opposed to our previous result, which was only 18. Um, so this, if you were to look at our initial pro, or our initial investment, uh, which was 15.96 divines, and again, assuming like pretty much worst case where we're not selling the superior gems, we have less than average results in Temple, and we take less than market value on all of our sales, we would still end up with a 50% margin of profit um, or a roughly a seven divine profit. And that would probably take you somewhere around five to eight minutes to do. All right. So now as we do in pretty much every video, um, I've got to do a live demonstration, um, whether or not it actually works out, variance is variance, but I know it's just talking about things in theory is no fun for anybody. so. Let's go ahead and do that here. Sorry, it's gonna resize real quick. Woo. Um, transform, fit the screen. 
go. So you can see, oops, you can see here, uh, I purchased uh, 15 Divergent Tornado Shots. So it's a little bit different than the data set there. Uh, we can actually just quickly do the math here. Uh, this is all the, so we would have, uh, I can just do it, I'll do it in QE. So 14 times 50 plus, which is 700. And then we would have 14 times 140 which equals uh, 100, 1,960. So 2760, which is almost exactly uh, 10, 11 divines, right? 10 divines is uh, 250. Yeah, basically 11 divs. Our expectation would be to hit four anomalous which would equal 12 divines. So again, just on the anomalous there, we would have a net profit. Um, and then we'll see what happens um, corruption wise after that. But we'll go ahead and uh, skip that first step. And bam, anomalous, first time. Shouldn't have bragged. Shouldn't have bragged. Oh, you bitch. There we go. Number two. And number three, back to bragging, baby. Oh, okay. All right, so we've got three gems so far. I feel like this sound bite might help us. Boom! Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three. Quick mess. All right. Thank you, Big Shaq. One more, baby. Oh! I am a god. I'm never going to die. Oh! <laughs> okay. I hope actually, I hope we don't hit any more because it's going to skew what I'm trying to say. Oh, I'll move my face over too. There we go. Oh, oh God, I'm good at this game. All right, so we ended up hitting 50% of them. Uh, again, it is, uh, it's two out of seven. So it's about 28, 29% roughly. Um, this is obviously not gonna uh, be an average outcome, but I did just make uh, 21 divines. How much did I say I spent? 11. So we just doubled our money. Five, that took maybe a minute and a half. <laughs> Uh, if I were to corrupt these right now, um, we would have a similar outcome to that one. Uh, but, but, but none of these, I'm going to have to level them anyway, though. Uh, a good way to do this, obviously, just go to a five-way. Uh, you can do it in about one run. Like uh, two two runs, maybe you'll get a gem from level one to level uh, 20. Uh, you know, two five-minute five-way things. It maybe cost you a divine to do that. Uh, throw in, um, you know, any six-link bow or six-socket bow. Um, and... Uh, Maloney, so you can get nine gems at a time and then just replace all of your actual necessity for gems and you can level like 30 gems at once. Not a big deal. Uh, as well, uh, GCP are quite cheap. Uh, they are 180 to one. So, you know, you're maybe at most gonna have to add an additional divine worth of gem uh, of GCPs and, you know, uh, maybe let's say one divine worth of, uh, uh, to pay for the uh, five ways. Um, that is obviously only if you want to corrupt them. As I mentioned, I can actually just sell these as they sit currently for, uh, there we go. See three divines each. Um, oh, sorry. My screen capture is not on. Anyways, it's, uh, it's three divines. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to cover here, guys. Uh, that was a very, very lucky outcome in that low live test at the end. But again, uh, when I mentioned the cycles of, um, profitability. This strategy here was the one that I initially suggested doing on that first video where you buy divergent and you use it because the weightings are so high. Again, two out of seven means one out of every 3.5. Um, we obviously got a much better result than that here, but uh, you know, we can then go on and uh, you can see I've got quite a few of them here. We got a 2120, uh, 21, we got a 20, tw uh, 15, 2115, a 2021. Uh, 2012, 2023, 2023, 2010, 2023, 2020, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, basically, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of different testing things, obviously trying to make some more content for you guys, find out some cool strategies that I think are, uh, you know, implementable for you guys. Obviously, I've got a lot of higher end craft stuff going on as well, but that's not so useful, I think, in terms of, um, you know, if you're having a tough time getting started, uh, I don't really think that uh, me showing you my next mirror craft is uh is gonna help but i'm gonna do it anyway because you know now i'm jacked um 
one of the things that has not been made yet this league is a triple seven ring. Um, so 7% dex, 7% int, 7% strength. Uh, I really kind of want to make that. I already do have a mirror ring. It's been mirrored several times. You can see dex, strength, T1 life, and then it's 61 crafted. Um, this is going to cost a lot of money, especially with the price of beasts. But I've started stocking up. You can see here I have picked up. Um, these are all vivid vultures. Uh, I picked up roughly three mirrors of the vivid vultures. Uh, so far, only 50 Kratia Chimerald, and then I paid uh, 1.5 mirrors for the base. Uh, I am actually going to make a video for you guys when I get started on the first round of this. I, I think what I'm going to do is get 300 Vultures, 200 Chimerals, the golden ratio, uh, 3 to 2, um, because obviously when you're rolling a third Implicit, there's um, only one out of three Vultures is going to change the right Implicit, and then for the other two, you need to use an imprint. So uh, to change a mod one time, you need... Uh, three vultures and two chimeras, which means every single time I want to reroll that third modifier, it is going to cost me four, 13 divines. <laughs> 13 divines to reroll the mod each time. And there are 241 implicits on rings. So uh, you do the math. We're talking big bank here, but I think it'd be kind of fun to watch. And, you know, uh, uh, rings are good too because there's lots of different combinations. There are a lot of these that exist. Um, you know, you've got uh, like the Dex Int. Frenzy, Dexin Multi, Dexin Blah Blah. One of the ones that don't exist yet. Uh, I don't think there's a double attribute Ellie Weakness on Hit or a double uh, attribute uh, Power Charge one. So it, it, we wouldn't have to just necessarily stop at uh, you know the triple seven, but that's obviously the, the goal. So stay tuned for that. Um, be trying to get that done the next couple of days, but again, it's going to cost thousands of divines to get that prepped. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but again, that's also one of those reasons why I've been focusing on things like gems. Because they're a very liquid investment. You know, when you get to things that are higher end crafts, especially some of the things I've been demonstrating, um, because I do it in such bulk quantities. Uh, I don't know if you remember my quiver crafting video. I did like 15 quivers at once. Uh, <laughs> not to mention that I actually don't enter the market until I publish my videos because I don't want to, as I've mentioned before, I don't want to benefit off of the information I present. Um, so it would be, I, I feel like it would be um, insincere on my part to like kind of, reap the benefits of that market post the video and then fuck all you guys over so i actually that's why i do these videos live and i don't actually put my stuff on the market until i know that video has hit youtube um so i'll be experiencing the market the same way you guys do and that way i can produce um and comment on things in, in a much more relatable sense um anyways yeah so that's what's going on there and again big big moral of the story here guys just to focus on the techniques focus on the, the you know the underlying principles of something uh, learn how to apply them yourselves and uh, you know if you make an informed decision you will become eventually at, to a point where you can do this completely on your own I mean you can do that now but you know I know a lot of people still feel like they need that that kind of extra push right now, you shouldn't be doubting yourselves but if you do have that self-doubt and following a guide helps you out oh as I know a lot of people kind of are at that stage in PoE um, no problem uh, but again Make sure you're, you're doing so with the appropriate state of mind and considerations as well. Sorry, last point. Um, make sure the person you're listening to doesn't have ulterior motives or they're not some jackass in 10 divines of gear making a two hour, you know, 45 minute highly edited video about how you can run heist for fucking three divines profit an hour. Uh, like complete garbage. So as long as you're following someone whose motivations are, are pure, whose data is good and they're presenting things, uh, in a logical and data-driven sense. Uh, so assuming that your guide is actually, that you are following, is not uh, is one that is done in good faith and with proper information. Um, those are the things that I think are, would be helpful for you guys to uh, to work on with respect to, uh, you know, how to be a more discerning viewer and how to implement it uh, better on your end. Hopefully everyone, myself included, has good outcomes uh, and we can uh, make it rain together, baby. All right, I hope you guys had a great weekend, and I'll catch you soon. Belton out. Peace.